So today we're talking about sperm and eggs and x-rays. Namely, what is the impact of radiation on the sperm and the ova? And specifically, fertility risks and hereditary risks of the possibility to pass down negative consequences to that next generation. Hey guys, I'm Brian Nett from HowardAlgeWorks.com. We have bite-sized content that's of interest for those in the radiology field, especially radiologic technologists and radiographers. If that sounds good to you, click below on subscribe and then click on the little bell icon so you can get notified when we release new content. So again, specifically today, we're going to be talking about fertility risks, and then we're also going to be talking about hereditary risks, and that's both for males and females. So the risks of radiation are going to be different for males and females in terms of the potential outcomes and in terms of hormonal impacts as well. We're going to be going into those details coming up right now at HowRealGyWorks.com. So the question is, in science fiction you'll see a lot of times that a mutation will occur and it's some mutation that's never been seen in the world before and actually a lot of times there's they're even positive mutations they're not they're not negative mutations but that is the stuff of science fiction and in the real world there is a risk for anyone in the population of having a mutation and those risks are actually increased when <clears throat> there is the radiation so there's not any new mutation risks but they're just higher levels or higher risk level so the actual mutations themselves are the same it's just they occur at a higher percentage in a population that has had radiation to the germline cells so those effects those effects like I was talking about, they have to happen to germline cells, so either the ovum or the sperm cell. And the first effect is if the dose is relatively large, this can cause fertility issues. So in men, if the dose to the sperm, the dose to the gonads is relatively high, so six gray, for instance, can cause sterility. And if it's a dose that's less than that, something from half a gray up to six gray, that's the case where there will be a delay between when that dose is given and when the sterile period occurs. And then it can take a while after that in order for fertility to occur again. So the sperm count goes down about six weeks after the irradiation and this is because the sperm cells are constantly being regenerated and the dose of 0.15 gray to 0.5 gray can actually cause a reduction it's not a full sterility but it's a reduction in fertility and one thing that's important to note here is that the hormones and libido and such are actually unaffected in the case of irradiation. And this is gonna be different than in the case of females because in the case of females, the hormones are based around the ova themselves. So in female sterility, in males what we talked about is the sperm are constantly being regenerated and that there's a six week lag between when the radiation occurs to when the sterility occurs. In females, they have all of the ovum after birth, just a few days after birth, all of the ova that the woman ever will have are present. So there's not a temporary sterility, but it's rather permanent. And the level is dependent, the, dose level that's needed to cause this is dependent on the age of the female. 
So if it's a rather young female, it could take up to 12 gray to cause the sterility. And if it's an older female that's closer to menopause, it can take as little as two gray to cause, again, the permanent sterility. And in this case, we note that the woman will experience all the same symptoms of going through menopause and that's in contrast to the male where all of the hormones will actually not be affected by the radiation. Animal experiments have been done and the important parameter to know here is what's called the doubling dose. All those same mutations are possible in a regular population and the doubling dose is the radiation dose needed such that there's double the likelihood or two times the likelihood for the given mutation to happen in the animals that see the radiation in comparison with a normal population. So that's the definition of a doubling dose. And then experiments have been done. The first experiments were done on fruit flies. These are nice because it's relatively easy to get large numbers of fruit flies. And the different mutations that were looked at, for instance, was the eye color and it, those are obvious things that you can observe going from red to white and mutation doubling dose was only 0.05 to 1.5 gray depending on the situation and then in mice the so-called mega mice studies were done here's here's an example of a, of a mutant mouse different color here and the overall the doubling dose for mice was about one gray and this is for the relatively lower dose rate conditions. So in order to assess the rate on humans, there's not enough good data from humans who have received radiation dose and who have been tracked over time. So the radiation doses are calculated and it's this kind of hybrid model where the assumptions are made based on how many mutations happen in a regular population. And not all of these mutations are going to lead actually to something bad. Not all of them are going to come to lead to a disease in, in life, but mutation rate is relatively high of some sort of mutation happening in relative population. And then the doubling dose is based on the doubling dose from those mouse experiments. So the ICRP has risk es estimates that are such that 0.2% uh, increase in a heritable effect for the general population and 0.1% increase for the working population. And just again to reemphasize that there is a lack of direct evidence in any human heritable effects. And this is from Beer. And that's why that this is primarily done from assumptions of the mutation rate in humans and then those animal experiments that were very well controlled. Doses in X-ray and CT exams are very low. There is a potential theoretical risk but this is a risk based on animal models and has not been demonstrated explicitly in the human population. So just in general, like always, like we've talked about, we want to have doses as low as reasonably achievable for all of our patients to do the right thing for our patients. So thanks again for hanging around. If you found this one interesting, also the gestational one. So after we talk about hereditary impact, we also want to talk about gestational. So you have the sperm and the egg, and when they come together and you have a successful embryo, that's when we're going to start talking about gestational risks of radiation.